Welcome to Art with Lorian, the place to reconnect with your inner artist and rediscover the joy of painting outside the lines. So this is our first episode and I call this my foundations uh, series. And what we're going to be doing is learning how to set up your studio. So the most important thing about setting up your studio um, is having that designated place that you can work, create, be inspired in, in an uninterrupted uh, way. The kind of surface that I would like you to have for this series and for many of my series is a, is a flat surface. This is just a basic table and I've used the kitchen counter to teach on in my existing uh, environment. So just a little bit about that's the first thing that you're going to want to set up. And the second thing that I'm going to ask that you prepare, or at least that you consider, it's not mandatory, but it's something that I like to do, is in my designated art space, um, I like to create a sacred space. So whatever that means to you, I like to create altars. And I'll just real quickly show you what I have here. Um, I have a little statue of Kuan Yin. She's the cosmic Kuan Yin. If you look closely, she's a bodhisattva, a goddess of mercy and compassion, and she's surrounded by the planets and the cosmos, uh, Saturn, Jupiter, Earth, Venus, Mars, and her usual accoutrement. So anyway, I really like to have her around me when I'm making art because I create a lot of cosmic art. And she is the goddess of compassion, and that's a big in, uh, intention that I like to carry through my art and be expressed through my hands and mind. So she gets to be here. And then I also have a candle and, you know, some special crystals and to kind of give energy. They're energy transmitters. Um, these are just things I like to have. You could have feathers, you could have special rocks, you could have poems, affirmations. Um, Whatever gives you meaning and empowerment, courage and confidence to create the kind of art that we're going to be creating and on your own practice on your own. So these are things I like to have. Um, also fresh flowers, the orchids here. And then lastly of what I have here is I have this spray. Palo Santo. The company I like to use is Floricopia. They're very pure and you can get this on their website and where I got it and I just kind of spray it around and it just kind of refreshes me, it refreshes my space and I like to have a clean space. These are recommended things I like to use. You have your own and um, that's just something I have to talk about because it's actually um, for me, it's a part of creating the sacred space where you will be creating, which is a sacred act. Now I'm going to talk about supplies. So <clears throat> for my classes the, the, in the foundation series, we're going to definitely need and require a journal. And you can get these at your local art supply stores. I'll talk about where to get things a little later. Um, I just picked this up at my local art supply store. It doesn't have to be expensive. This was on sale for like $8. It's a really nice book. I was actually really surprised. The paper's kind of thin, um, but it's good for drawing, for journaling, for, you know, a little bit of mixed media. If you do want to do more mixed media, I recommend something like this. It's a heavier mixed media paper, and um, this is by a company called Strathmore, again from my local art supply store, which I like to support the local businesses. And this one's, it's a lot thicker, and so it can hold wet and dry media. And then I'm gonna ask you to have a really nice pencil, something that you like to draw with. Also, watercolor paper, and this is my favorite, by and large, this is my favorite paper. I also like this one. This is, this is just another cold press, and I'll talk more uh, later about 
the difference between cold press and hot press. Um, this is a, the cold press are rougher and the hot press are smoother. So, so about brushes, you're going to want different shapes and sizes. So this is a filbert. It's kind of a rounded uh, rectangle. I love these filberts. They're stiff. So there's shapes and sizes, shapes, sizes, and the stiffness or the kind of the bushiness. This is a looser, kind of freer brush. But the main thing is that you just have a, a variety just to start the foundation series together. And then as you get more into it, you can build your toolkit. Um, so that's it about brushes for now. Uh, you will, it would be helpful if you had a, a palette knife. These are what I use to mix the paints. So have one of these. You can also get plastic ones. I like the metal ones, but you can get plastic as well. So moving on to palette. The palette is the place where we're going to mix the paints. And there's a couple ways you can go. Of course, a multitude. This is an okay way. It's a disposable. It's, it's not as green or eco-friendly as I would like, but it's good in a pinch. It's a palette, disposable palettes. They're like wax paper. Uh, they're different than the wax paper that you buy from the supermarket for your, you know, this for food. This is my favorite option. Stuff. It's a little bit of an investment. I think you could probably just use a piece of safety glass. It's very old. I've used <laughs> I've used it a lot, indoor, outdoor. It's pretty crusty, um, but this is it's it's a glass palette, and it comes in this box here. And um, you can also get little plastic ones. And if you look at any of your local art supply stores, you'll see there's like 50 options. So just get the palette that it works best for you. There's one, there's even the little round palettes that we used in my classroom. They're like $1.50. They're round and they have the little holes. Uh, and those are good. You can even use cupcake pans. You can use um, cookie sheets, old cookie sheets. You can use, you know, paper plates. I've pretty much used everything in different uh, situations, but my go-to for my professional practice is this guy and I'm probably ready for a new one, but I just make it last and there you have it. <laughs> so um, moving on, you would, could get a squirt bottle, a spray bottle. I like to have one around. These are probably from like a pharmacy store and they're under about $2 or something. So these are really good to have. Um, you can also get the ones from the hardware store that are bigger with more power and um, But just some sort of spray bottle and some paper towels and I recommend that you get the smooth kind these are by a company called Viva and The reason why I like smooth is because if you use it to blot paint, it doesn't leave a pattern and then I like just to have an, an old towel, like a rag um, that you'd wash the car with. So just an old towel, it can be a t-shirt, um, but I like to have an old towel. And then as far as your water, you're gonna use, I have a little water container. It can be an old cup, like these little tumblers. Or it can be something like this from the art supply store that has holes for the brushes, which I use a lot. And you can see I've used it a lot. <laughs> and this is what you can do with these is you can get really fancy and have all your brushes there. And it's fun and it's organized and helpful instead of having the brushes hanging around and messing stuff up. So this is what I use a lot. You can see it's pretty intense in here and I just use plain water and that's what we'll be using water-based paints and then speaking of paints this is what we're gonna use now these are called gouache and they are sold where the watercolors are sold in your local store or online you can google gouache 
It's a French word. It's si similar to the word tempera, which is the Italian word for the same kind of paint. And it's the kind of, it's a water-based paint that I used when I was getting my degree in school. We had a class called 2D design, two-dimensional design, and we were told to get gouache. A lot of my paintings are painted with gouache. And they, these are my favorite paints, bar none. Um, I'll tell you why. First of all, these paints are water-based, so there's no smells from oil or, they're just, they're, they're non-toxic, they're like watercolor. Except the best part, and this is the specialty of gouache, is they have clay, they have chalk. They have chalk, they have gypsum. Gypsum is, it's a natural uh, element from the earth and it makes these paints kind of opaque yet and pliable, yet they're water based like watercolors and yet they have a body to them. They have a malleability. You can reinvigorate them with water and they, they remind me of clay. And when you see working with them and when we explore and do our, our projects with them and create paintings with them, uh, you will be amazed at how incredibly flexible and forgiving these are. Meaning you can go in and once it's dry, you can take the water and, and bring them back to life. And there's just, there's so many, these paints are so giving as well. I mean, they're just, I could, blab on and on about these paints. So, um, and then before I forget, you're gonna wanna cover your surface and protect it. So even on the floor, you can put a drop cloth that you can get from the hardware store. You can put some plastic down, like a paint drop cloth, or you can use something really simple that you can find at any little drugstore market or whatever is these party plastic uh, tablecloths. Lastly, as far as supplies go, I recommend an apron, and it can be your kitchen apron, like this is mine. Um, it can be a, so it can be an old kitchen apron that you have. It doesn't have to be fancy. It can be a hand-me-down. It can be secondhand, which I recommend, or it could be like one of these little guys that you get at the shops. And one other thing I recommend that you have, you don't have to, but it'll make it kind of fun, is a medium. Uh, and this is what I like to use. It's basically, it's called a glazing medium. And it's gonna give more body to your paints. You don't have to have it um, for our first few classes, but this is something that you'll wanna get later. And if you do get it, and if you're making a big shopping trip, you can add it to your order. And so you'll have all of your supplies, your sacred studio space, and we'll be exploring our first topic in my foundation series, which is the element of color. So looking forward to next time, and I'll see you in the studio.